In this video, we're going to look at several examples where there are things moving in a circular path where there's more than one force acting along the radius. In this first situation, we have a daredevil that's riding a bicycle in a loop-de-loop -loop that has a radius of seven meters. And we're going to be given the speed at the top of the loop, and we're gonna find the force of the track at the top of the loop. We're gonna be given the speed at the bottom of the loop and find the force of the track at the bottom of the loop. And then we're also going to figure out what is the minimum speed that he needs to have at the top of the loop to not lose contact with the loop. So in the first situation, we're going to assume that the man and his bike together have a mass of 100 kilograms. If the speed that he has at the top of the loop is 10 meters per second, we want to calculate how big is the force of the track pushing down on the rider. In uniform circular motion problems, the acceleration is always in towards the center of the circle. So we are going to make in towards the center of the circle, the direction of the acceleration, our positive direction. So any force that's in towards the center of the circle, we're going to make positive. Any force that's away from the center of the circle, we're going to make negative. At the top of the loop, the force of gravity is pulling down on the rider, and the force of the track is pushing down on the rider as well. But both of those forces are in towards the center of the circle, so we're going to make both of those forces positive. The net force acting at the top is the sum of those two forces. The net force is the force of the track plus the force of gravity. Both of them are positive, and so the net force is that sum of those two forces. In any situation, you look at all of the forces that are acting, and the net force is all of the individual forces acting added together. The force of gravity is something that we can calculate. The force of gravity is the mass times 9.8. It's 100 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared. So the force of gravity, or the weight of the rider, is 980 newtons. So the net force is the unknown force of the track plus 980 newtons, the force of gravity. So one of our equations was the net force is the individual forces added together. Our other equation that we look at is that the net force is mass times acceleration. But here, because it's moving in a circle, the acceleration is the speed squared divided by the radius. That's how we calculate the acceleration for something moving in a circular path. That net force is 100 kilograms times 10 meters per second quantity squared divided by seven meters. So we know that the total force, we know that the net force that's acting on the rider at the top of the loop needed to be 1,428.57 newtons. And so if the net force is the force of the track plus the force of gravity and the net force is 1,428.57, we can set those two equal to each other. 1,428.57 equals the force of the track plus 980 newtons or the force of the track at the top of the circle is 448.57 newtons. What about at the bottom of the circle? Here we're gonna make the assumption that he has the same speed of 10 meters per second at the bottom. For something that's moving around a vertical circle, looking at conservation of energy, he would typically have a smaller speed at the top and a faster speed at the bottom. But here, just in terms of calculation, we're going to look at the speed being the same. So we still have the same 100 kilogram rider. Now he's moving at 10 meters per second at the bottom of the loop. The force of the track is upwards. The force of gravity is still downwards. But again, we need to make towards the center of the circle positive. So the force of the track is positive. The force of gravity, we're going to make negative. Everything that's in towards the center of the circle, we make positive. Everything that's away from the center of the circle, we make negative. And we know that the net force needs to be towards the center of the circle. So we know that the force of the track is going to have to be bigger than the force of gravity. There needs to be an unbalanced force towards the center of the circle. So the force that's towards the center of the circle needs to be bigger than the force that's away from the center of the circle. Just like before, the net force is the two forces added together. The net force is the force of the track plus the force of gravity. But the force of the track is positive. It's towards the center of the circle. 
The force of gravity, it's still the same writer, so the force of gravity is still 980 newtons, but in the equation we make it negative. It's away from the center of the circle. So the net force is the force of the track plus negative 980 newtons. And the net force equals mass times acceleration. The acceleration is still the speed squared divided by the radius. And because it was the same speed, we already know this value. This net force is 1,428.57 newtons. And so just like before, we set those two equal to each other. The force of the track minus 980 newtons equals 1,428.57 newtons. Or the force of the track is 2,408.57 newtons. We needed to have an unbalanced force towards the center of the circle, so we knew that the force of the track was going to be bigger than 980 newtons. Now what we want to calculate is what speed he needed to have at the top of the loop to remain in contact with the loop. The slower he goes, the smaller the force of the track acting on him will be. What we're going to be looking for is as he goes slower and slower and slower, that normal force, that force of the track gets smaller and smaller and smaller, and at some point that force of the track is zero. That's when he's just skimming the top. And if he goes any slower, then he falls out of the circular path. So we want to figure out what speed does he need to have to stay on the track. At what speed is he right on the verge of falling off the loop? Just like before, the forces acting at the top would be the force of the track pushing down and the force of gravity pulling down. And so the net force is the force of gravity plus the force of the track. But we're looking for the condition when he's just skimming the surface of the track. At the minimum speed, the force of the track is zero, but he's still moving in a circular path. So what we're trying to find is what speed can he have so that the net force just equals the force of gravity. So the minimum net force that's acting is just that force of gravity, 980 newtons, because the force of the track is zero. Because he's still moving in a circle, he's not falling off the loop, so he's still staying in contact. So he just skims the top, but then as soon as he gets past that top, he picks back up with the circle again. So if he's still moving in a circle, the net force is still the mass times the acceleration, and because he's still moving in a circular path, the acceleration is the speed squared divided by the radius. The minimum net force corresponds to the minimum speed. The net force gets smaller and smaller and smaller as the speed gets smaller and smaller and smaller. But the smallest that the net force can be is 980 newtons. Unless the track is able to pull up on him, and on a lot of roller coasters you have that just for safety. But here, if there's nothing holding him to the track, the smallest that that net force can be is 980 newtons. And so we can use that to calculate the minimum speed of the rider. We set that minimum net force of 980 newtons equal to the mass times the acceleration, the mass times v squared over r, 100 kilograms times the unknown minimum speed squared divided by 7 meters. And so that minimum speed, if you solve it out, it's the square root of the radius times acceleration due to gravity. That is always going to be true for something moving in a vertical circle. That minimum speed to just lose contact is going to be the square root of r times g. It's the square root of 9.8 meters per second squared times 7 meters. You don't need to know that equation. You get it just from solving this right here. But that's the square root of 68.6, where that minimum speed is 8.283 meters per second. We knew that that minimum speed was going to have to be less than 10 meters per second because we already calculated at 10 meters per second the track is pushing down on him. And so as he goes slower than that at the top, right at this point, he's right on the verge of losing contact with the track. He's right on the verge of falling off of the track. And now I want to look at a problem that's very similar except 
it's something that's going over the top of a hill. So we have a car that's traveling over the top of a hill at a constant speed. At that top of the hill, the speed is 15 meters per second. The mass of the car is 1,200 kilograms. The radius of the hill is 35 meters. And we're going to calculate the force of the road, or the normal force, that's acting on the car. So one force that we know that's acting on the car is the force of gravity. The force of gravity is 1,200 times 9.8 or 11,760 newtons. We know that we have a normal force acting upwards. If this car was at rest, the normal force would equal the force of gravity. They would balance each other out. But because he's going over the top of a hill, because he's moving along a circular path, there must be an unbalanced force towards the center of the circle. This tells us that the normal force is going to have to be smaller than the force of gravity. The force that's away from the center of the circle needs to be smaller than the force that's towards the center of the circle. So just like before, we make towards the center of the circle positive and away from the center of the circle is negative. So the net force is the two forces, the force of gravity plus the normal force. The force of gravity is positive because it's towards the center of the circle, 11,760 newtons plus negative F normal. The normal force, we include the negative sign to represent the fact that the normal force is away from the center of the circle. The net force also equals the mass times the acceleration. The acceleration, it's still moving in a circle, so it's V squared over R. So the net force is 1,200 kilograms times the speed 15 meters per second squared divided by the radius of 35 meters or the net force, that total force that's acting, is 7,714.29 newtons. The net force is the individual forces added together, and the net force is mass times acceleration. Setting those two equations equal to each other, we have 11,760 minus the normal force equals 7,714.29 newtons. Or we get that the normal force is 4,045 0.714 newtons. So we said that the normal force needed to be less than the force of gravity. The net force needed to be towards the center of the circle and 4045 is smaller than 11,760. If something is moving along a circular path you need to make sure that when you add your forces together there's an unbalanced force towards the center of the circle. It's that unbalanced force that allows it to move in a circular path and not just continue in a straight line. If the normal force equaled 11,760 newtons, the net force would be zero and that car would have to be traveling in a straight line. The force of gravity has to be bigger than the normal force to allow the car to be pulled down below the straight line that it was traveling along. So the couple of problems that we looked at here are examples of things that are called vertical circles. And in those vertical circle problems, you need to make sure that you take into account the force of gravity and any other forces that are acting along the radius of the circle. And when you calculate your net force, it needs to be all of those forces added together. The problems are not any more difficult than the ones in a previous video where there was only one force acting. It's just something where you have multiple forces. If you know the acceleration, you can figure out what one of the unknown forces is. Or it could be something where we're given the normal force and we're given the force of gravity and we use that to figure out what the speed is. That's what we did in the problem where we found that minimum speed. But we could be given what the normal force is in a problem like this and asked how fast is it going as it goes over the top of the hill. Or we could be given the normal force and the force of gravity and the speed and we could be asked what is the radius of the curve. The only difference between vertical circle problems and the simpler problems in the previous video is that there's more than one force acting and your net force needs to be those individual forces. It's like before when we looked at lifting and lowering objects, you needed to make sure that you took into account the tension in the rope pulling up and the force of gravity pulling down and the net force was those two forces added together. It's the exact same idea.